Hi there. Um, today I want to talk about um, a new technology uh, which uh, is really experimental right now, but it has the the possibility, it's got the, the, the chance to completely change the way we interact uh, with each other on the workplace. Uh, actually, the, the potential here is to change completely the very concept of, of workplace, the very concept of uh, companies and what companies are and especially what is the best way for uh, people to interact and create value right and this is uh, the DAO the centralized autonomous organization I've talked about these things in the past uh, but it like beginning 2018 um, it was a bit too early to be honest and uh, it still is a bit too early Sorry, I'm trying to change here the background of your screen while I'm talking. So um, DAOs, the, the concept is the centralized autonomous organization, which means an organization. So you, know, you can think about this like a company which creates value, which organizes people around a specific project. And there you are, almost there. And um, only that these are an alternative to usual companies. So let's first see what companies are. So companies are social constructs, uh, organizations where people get in. Uh, first, there's a, a founder, maybe a few investors, who have an idea, uh, risk their work, their time, or their money. They, when it works, it, they start hiring people. And these people are hired um, in a hierarchical way so there's like a pyramid right and uh, this pyramid uh, grows and grows and the people on the top get farther and farther from the people at the bottom so in very big organizations you have uh, different levels of management and this is how we have organized until today um, human interaction and it's worked incredibly well I mean what we have now is the result of this kind of uh, organization. Give me a second here, I'm really trying to fix it. I'm not very professional with that. Okay, that seems done. Yeah, so I am smaller now and it doesn't matter if you see me and if I'm delayed in any way. There you are. So, that's companies. That's, that's what brought us here and that's what we take for granted. We take for granted that if you want to build something, like in our case it will be a booking platform, uh, or you may want to build a company which creates hardware, bicycles, or anything else, basically, we instinctively go to the uh, framework of a company. So we need to found it, fund it, hire people, and then extract profit. Profit will keep things working. Profit is the, the, like the, the gas of the whole engine uh, that's why profit works profit driven companies work and ideology driven organizations have different you know efficiency lower usually or they don't last as long so profit is the king here profit is what made us um, uh, go that far as, as human society and societies uh, but at the same time profit is creating some kind of problems, especially when the companies get really big and uh, they are kind of dehumanized and the decisions are taken in the name of profit and this is actually embedded in the law of most countries In because you as a, as a founder, as a CEO, your judiciary duty is to stakeholders. And stakeholders, what they want is to have a return on investment. So you have these companies uh, what comes to mind is tobacco companies in the past who you know advertised cigarettes and knowingly killing tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, then there's a story of lead into petrol. Um, we can look at today's you know like Facebook. What Facebook is doing is undermining, uh, according to some and according to me, uh, the very fabric of democracy just because they need to grow and they need to make profit. So, um, having said that companies are the best social contract we have built so far, 
we need to be open-eyed, cannot be naive and say that's the perfect way in human societies will never improve. Uh, things will never change. We have reached the peak of global civilization. And, and this is pretty, I would say, um, easy to debunk because we are on the brink of a, a self-destruction of the human race. So you can't really say everything is working perfectly unless you are uh, basically uh, an idiot, I would say, right? So things work. Uh, um, we have incredible innovation. We Technology is ruling the world, but things are not working perfectly, there's things we can improve, right? Things we can uh, improve. And there's things we need to improve pretty quickly. So, we as human beings, we always try to find new ways to, to, to progress, right? And uh, one of the side products of uh, blockchain technology, um, which was, you know, invented in order to uh, make a separation between state and money in the same way as um, we, we did a separation between state and religion, uh, a byproduct is governance. Uh, we start seeing uh, new ways to organize governance. And governance me basically is companies to organize how we take decisions in an efficient manner, right? And here where DAOs come into play. DAOs, again, decentralized, autonomous organizations. Um, we have some DAOs in our past. Uh, I would say the most closest to us as human beings are small tribes. When we were in tribes, before they grew um, too much and you needed to have a chief, uh, there were tribes which were small enough for people not to create an, a hierarchical model. So that's, that's the thing which we are kind of uh, trying to replicate with DAOs, but at a huge scale. So we could have tribes of millions or billions of people because the rules uh, are not enforced by the fact that we know each other. That's the thing with tribes. Everybody knows everybody and any small mistake, any moral thing you do, anything which can harm the others is kind of registered in everybody's brains. It's kind of a, I would say like a blockchain of behaviors, right? There's many, let's say the tribe of 10 people and uh, one person, I don't know, doesn't wake up in the morning, doesn't go hunting and everybody will know, the other nine will know that that day this guy didn't go hunting, so he's lazy, so he's actually, and he's eating anyway, so he's actually harming the the rest of the society but when tribes grow and they become villages there's not enough bandwidth um, to record all these transactions because uh, it's exponential you need you as a person need to remember what the other hundred did the other 99 did right and it's just too much and all 99 in, in a village of 100 have to remember everything so if you come from a small village and not, not from a big city you know what I'm talking about uh, everybody knows everything about everybody else, but as it grows, uh, so the power, the peer power, uh, the peer control gets um, gets weaker, and you need to set up uh, first a chief and then institutions with several chief, chiefs, right? So you have uh, all these levels until you go to the president of, of the republic or the dictator. Uh, according to what you prefer as a as a mean, you know, as a, as a social construct. So, um, the kind of miracle which we're looking at now is that through blockchain, which is able to record all these rules and taking away these rules from humans but putting them in the hands of mathematics, we can envision huge projects which take the place of companies and uh, where you don't need to have um, a hierarchy, a, a pyramid scheme in a way. And I like to say pyramid scheme because it kind of uh, hints at the fact that when you are in a society which is made in a hierarchical way, the people on top are always getting um, advantage of the people on the bottom. This is like in human nature and it's the nature of this kind of frameworks that's how the system works and it's not you know it doesn't happen by mistake that on top you don't get the best people 
Um, maybe in some kind of mythical time in democracy, there was a time when people getting on the top were the best, the most prepared, the most uh, ethical. Maybe, I don't know if it's true, but that, that certainly it, we have a myth that it, it used to be like that. And maybe it was like that, because when you build a society from nothing, um, maybe the best people come out. But then, as the time passes, I mean, the, the worst uh, people get on top, the, the ones with less morals. And some people argue uh, the sociopaths, because to go at the top, you have to kind of have no respect and no uh, sensitivity to other people's uh, suffering. You have to, to be able to stab people, in the, uh, stab people in the back and so on. So... Enough with uh, you know um, spitting on the uh, on the um, on the dish which you know we're eating on. Like uh, sorry for the ugly way to say it. This again, this way, this hierarchical way is the best so far. Okay, in the same way as democracy is the best so far, but we have to we should find ways to improve it. Um, let's go back to DAOs. So DAOs are organizations let's make an example let's make it with trips so we we can stay on something pretty concrete trips today is not a DAO um, I kind of decide everything I, I try to keep a very open mind and to keep uh, open channels with everybody in order to acquire enough um, information and then analyze this information and then uh, reanalyze it with, with other people and then take a decision but this is a very hierarchical and classic uh, organization where you know one person at the top uh, decides everything it works because it's very small okay what about when it gets bigger well when it gets bigger we either go the company way so again managers middle managers CEO board etc or we try to do something different and um, I'm really happy uh, that the timing is working is working well for us because I would like to do something different uh, first of all Companies work on profit and Trips is not trying to make profit. So Trips as a company, it's called Trips Community uh, and it's based in Estonia and this company is not there to make profit because if we wanted to make profit, we should charge commissions, okay, we're charging a 5% commission and then maybe we should charge 10 and then 15 and then maybe uh, push, you know, try to exploit the marketplace we're managing because in order to extract as much money as we can but we don't need to do that do that this is already uh happening with other companies we what is the point to create another one like this right what we want to do is a company um which like trips community in in estonia a company which tries to stay small and whose aim is not profit but is to make the platform working so uh if this was Booking.com, that would be that you have to imagine a Booking.com where you have 10 people working for Booking.com, not tens of thousands, uh, a turnover of, I don't know, a million a year and not hundreds or more a year, and profits of basically zero. Uh, all the money which comes in is reinvested in the platform. At the same time, a huge platform as big as Booking.com today. Okay. How do we get there? Well, we get there maybe by doing a DAO, and uh, let me let me go a bit deeper into DAO. So, what, what the reason we haven't done this so far because is because there's no technology, there's no software for that. But there are people, and that's the reason you know the people I want to talk about today in this video. There are people who are working on that, and and they have been working on that for I would say a couple of years at least. And the first one I'm presenting to you is called Aragon. You will find it on uh, aragon.org, A-R-A-G-O-N.org. This is a, a project launched by a couple of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, young Spanish guys. And th that's what you're seeing on your screen. So let us go a bit deeper in, uh, go a bit closer on this screen and see what they're doing here, right? You can see a screen. It's a very simple and basic uh, interface where you can do a few things. First of all, you can vote governance, right? So 
people will vote on specific subjects, right? Specific matters. And how do they vote? They vote through the blockchain. They, in the case of Aragon, they are committing some money. And when we say money in this space, it's never euro, or dollars, or others. It's always crypto. In this case, it's ether. And voting costs them a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not expert of these systems yet. I've just tried it, tried them out, and they're a bit confused in my head because there's more than one. And uh, and people vote. So let's say that you put at the vote if the commission of trips has to be five, has to stay five, or go back, go to two percent, or go to seven percent. And uh, what's going to happen is that on online, maybe in Slack. Maybe in Discord, that's what we use. Maybe in, you know, in Hangout, people discuss, right? Everybody discusses, and uh, and then one day the vote starts, and then one day the vote ends, and people vote, and this decision is taken in this case by the community. Okay. Uh, what is the advantage of this over having expert people decide? Because you probably already have felt like if everybody decides, it's anarchy. And that's probably true. That's probably um, uh, one of the risks of these organizations. I'm not saying this is better than companies. I'm just saying this is an experiment and it's really interesting to follow them. But the, the advantage is that um, you have just made uh, the whole platform even more open. Because again, uh, what we're trying to do with TRIPS is not an alternative to Airbnb and Booking. Uh, we are trying to make something which is neutral and open which belongs to everybody, which everybody can use by knowing that nobody is going to try to take advantage of them and or kick them out in this uh, de deplatforming frenzy which is happening in, in platforms today. Um, so nobody can actually decide something against you. Nobody, one person I mean, but the community, the network can decide. So that's one of the things you can do. You can vote. Right. Another thing which is even more interesting in my, in my opinion is that uh, imagine a company today who has to grow, uh, they have to hire and to hire they have to kind of, first of all, they can only hire in, com in, com in countries where people have a bank account or access to, to a credit card in case, in, no, sorry, this is a different thing, but they, they have a bank account. so. Uh, you're already limiting to uh, a, a big chunk of the world population is limited. And even if they have a bank account, it may be not worth for you to uh, give out a project you know, or hiring somebody where it's too expensive to, um, to pay them or to, to do the paperwork. Like there are several countries in Italy where because of work protection, in, sorry, in, I was thinking about Italy, but several countries in Europe where uh, a foreign company couldn't hire somebody, let's say, in Italy, um, unless they open a company in Italy. So imagine how there's a lot of friction, right? So yeah, you can do the uh, maybe a different kind of contract, but it, paperwork is really heavy, and sometimes you just go like, okay, we're gonna hire locally, and and when you hire locally, you are choosing amongst a thousand potential people instead of a million, right? So. And, and you're paying them probably even more because they are in your own country if you are from a rich country. Mm, in, in this way, anybody in the world, anybody in the world who has uh, a crypto wallet, and having a crypto wallet is just downloading an app. You don't need to show a passport, right? You don't need to ask for permission. So anybody in the world who has a wallet can, be, can work for you, right? And uh, this opens to an incredible pool of talent. And I would say more, a pool of talent who doesn't have other opportunities. So he's really eager to, to work on this. More than that, and we, here we go in kind of the world of open source, uh, people could see your project, like people could, could see trips. That's happening already a lot uh, in the development space. And say, okay, I like what they're doing. Um, I'm not going to contact them and try and ask them to give me a task. I'm just going to do it. Maybe a small one, and I'm gonna prove them that we are that I'm good. And then when I'm good, maybe I'm gonna get more. So this happens. Uh, this has been happening for decades in software development. Uh, Origin Protocol, which is uh, the the software we are based on, is doing that. You can go in Origin Protocol if you're a developer, 
there are in GitHub, which is a website for people who know what it is. It's a website where you see what people are coding. And there are first, uh, first good issues, I think. So very small tasks for people who just started, uh, just found this project. And they can spend an hour, you know, doing a small change in the website, uh, proposing a small change in the website, and then show that they're good. So um, in this case, the company sees, sees the code, they can judge the quality, accept these uh, modifications, put it into production, which means actually change the website. Just think about somebody wants to do a better logo. Okay, that's easy to understand. Somebody from a country, I don't know, in Africa says, okay, nice. I'm going to propose them a better logo and spend one hour or, a, you know, whatever time this person wants to do a better logo and then send the logo and say, if you, if you like it, you can use it. And if they like it, they, the logo changes for the whole website. So this person, and this person will not get paid in that case, it's open source. Uh, in our case, in trips, we will actually pay with tokens. And... Um, and this could be done at any level, not only software. It could be somebody say, I'm going to translate the white paper in my local language. Um, and, and, and many, many things like this. So from the point of view of the organization, you have not only access to a very big pool of talent, but you have talent coming in uh, and doing a self-filtering, self-vetting. You, you remove the whole part where you have to look for talent, uh, you know, do advertisement, go through, through work agencies, um, uh, recruitment agencies, sorry, uh, and then do the interviews and hire somebody and after a month see that the guy or the girl is not good and let him go. It, you completely change the way. People come in, show they're good, and then you can actually hire them. Like Origin Protocol is actually hiring people like that. And it's amazing. You've got this guy from, I don't know, some lost city in the, in the Siberian... Uh, planes who connects to their website develops a little piece of code and then it develops more the code is accepted and a month later the guy is, is hired by a California company from his own home and you can imagine maybe he was making $200 a month and now maybe he's making 2000 I don't know the numbers here this is a new way to uh, you know make offer and demand of, of work uh, meet and uh, I, I find this amazing. And the scalability of this process cannot be beaten by any company, okay? By any company uh, organization because it's just faster and it's just uh, lighter, okay? So how do you do with that? Well, the thing is, the easiest way is uh, for uh, the person to accept crypto. But we can go much farther because in this example, the company would like, somebody in the company would send some money at the end of the month, right? Very classic. But it goes much farther. And um, and uh, one way which uh, this could be done is that uh, a task is built, like, okay, we need to remake completely the, the front page of the website because it's, it's updated, let's do a new design. New design on the website. The task is published, um, a few people come in, uh, a few people make proposals, and then somebody has to decide which person is gonna do this page. Well, the community can do it. it it's, we put it on a vote, right? So the community decides that this person is gonna do the, the website, and think about it. There's no need for managers to decide. So you have removed the need, and you have removed power from managers about this part. You have decentralized, the decision making now the question is is this decision going to be better than decisions taken by professionals we don't know maybe they're worse okay uh, in general more people um, deciding doesn't mean better outcome of decision because there could be nine people have no idea of design and the one person who knows about design is outvoted so again voting is a very delicate issue there's another issue with this softwares and it's not a software problem um, the issue is that not many people vote voting is like yeah it's, it's a job you know i trust this organization uh, I, I want you to do the website uh, because I, i'm tired of the otas and 
just do it, right? So when very few, few people vote, you, you get a power concentrated in few people. And um, one, one possible solution is to move away from laptops and computers and let do the voting uh, on the smartphone. But again, if people vote from the, from the smartphone, uh, it's easier to vote, but it's not easier to follow and to be informed. So again, it could be not uh, the best way to do it. But again, when you do a DAO, it doesn't mean you have to, do, to put everything on votes. You could vote only very important contentious issues, right? Uh, you can still have a, a core startup where decisions are taken uh, in the classic way, okay? And uh, I will go even farther than that. Um, think about it. there is a need for marketing, okay? And uh, and we go into the funding thing because you can fund these companies. Like uh, usually, let's go to the normal world. Uh, you are, you are a startup founder. You need investors. Uh, you go to the VCs or incubators, so some professionals. They give you money, and then they start waiting for you to uh, come back five years later with an exit or uh, go to you know an IPO and basically make their money ten times, hundred times, a thousand times more. That's what happens with Airbnb or Booking and the others. And this introduces this problem of. Uh, the company which which needs to extract as much value as possible in DAOs we can theorize again i want to stress out these are theories today 2019 to let's see this video in five years from now uh, how things went uh, it could be that anybody in the community wants this platform to exist and quick please because i'm spending a lot of money on this on on, on the otas they can put money they can put um Crypto for a dollar, ten dollars, hundred dollars, thousand dollars, whatever. They get tokens, uh, worthless, to worthless tokens like uh, monopoly money. I have to stress out this still a lot uh, in exchange, and then there the project is funded. Now, where does the money go? In case of chip, does it go in my pockets? No, that would, yeah, of course, that would be the classic way. A better way or a new way would be that the money goes into a smart contract smart contracts. Uh, it goes into a software and the software doesn't take decisions. The software waits for instructions and the instruction is send the money there or send the money there. Okay, and there will be uh, person A and this will be person B, two people competing to do the, the marketing job, right? So the way I visualize this is that people put money in the project, in the smart contract, so it gets stuck into the software and then people come and say, I want to do the marketing. And you have two people, maybe they're going to do kind of a small crowdfunding, right? Um, they say, I'm going to do the marketing for trips in this way. I need that amount of money or whatever. Let's say the amount of money is fixed. Like we have raised 100K, $100,000 uh, for marketing from the community. And the money is not in my pockets. So I, I'm the face of trips, but I cannot touch this money. I can't touch this 100000 First of all, that's interesting, right? And then this money is stuck in the smart contract and who can move this money? Only the community. Uh, we're gonna have in the website two, two videos and all where the two marketing experts are gonna say, I'm gonna push social. The other guy says, I'm gonna push, uh, I don't know, Google AdWords or SEO, whatever. Other techniques, different dynamics, different approaches. And the community decides. So the community votes, and the vote goes to the smart contract, like a uh, small electricity, you know, impulse, and pack the money goes to person A, the person that wants to do uh, Google marketing, let's say, and uh, and then the person doing Google marketing start doing it, and when the money is over, the time is over, uh, this person could go come back and say these are my results, and then somebody else could come in, like maybe five people come in. And we have five competing projects. Now you say, what about if this person steals this money? Okay. Well, this is one of the easy ways to to manage. Let me go away from this page because it's probably annoying to see this thing moving too much. So yeah, let's go here. Um, how do we avoid somebody getting money and running away? You don't avoid this, but you avoid people running away with a lot of money. So let's say that the first marketing project has a cap of $100. Let, show me what you can do with $100, which maybe 
you know, there's gonna be three people who do, one people wins the money, and then it's gonna do marketing, not even with the money, but you know, just by maybe talking about the project on social networks or doing another video, whatever. Once the person has proven that $100 are well spent because it brought a lot of traffic and interest on the project, um, they uh, they can we can like the, the whole rules of the system could be okay. Now you can double. So the next one is 200. The next one is 400. And it, the more you have uh, proven yourself, the more you can actually raise. And this is like one person raising money through the project for a specific task. Okay, and the community decides if this person gets the money or not. And the community funds this money. Then you see that the company behind this, in this case, Chips Community, is not even touching money. Or the company can raise money just for administration, just for the minimum um, you know, basics. But the biggest chunk of the money is, is given by the community in stages to different people directly. This is really a decentralized way to, to organize this. Now, it all sounds exciting. Um, we have to start from the assumption that everything will go wrong and I'm pretty sure you try something like this it will go wrong any new technology goes wrong by default but the point is to try many times until we get it right okay and the, the nice thing is that it's not only us trying this but there are, there are going to be many many more companies uh, doing that um, and in maybe in 20 years from now this way to organize projects is going to be uh, much more efficient and scalable than companies. Maybe companies will be um, like uh, used only for a subset of specific project where, projects where company work. One of my assumptions here is that to organize a platform like Airbnb or like Booking, uh, companies are not the best way because of the skewed interest. This looks much better. Okay, but again, it's experimental. And I tried this software from Aragon. Um, and yeah, you can do things. There is one specific problem with them is the cost of transactions, because when you do any transaction, it can get very expensive for the gas. We're talking about Ethereum. Ethereum hasn't reached any sufficient scalability so far. So yeah, um, it's maybe not doable. And let me introduce you to, at least for now, right? Let me introduce you to another project, not we transfer. Autonomy. There you are. So this project comes out from uh, Aragon. They were with Aragon first. Uh, I think because of the cost, they decided to do their own blockchain. Uh, these guys are from Sofia, Bulgaria. I went to see them the other day. Uh, they are uh, not as advanced as Aragon. They are, I would say, still on paper at the moment. Um, Human-centric capitalism on the blockchain. Work with each other, not for one another. This is pretty powerful. Uh, we are organizing in trips to work together with each other, but not one for another. You're not working for me because I'm the founder. And that's a nice thing to say, but when you actually, the money you're sending or somebody sending doesn't go to me, well, then this is a fact. You're not working for me. You're working for one another, right? So let's see what, what they show here. Uh, Vitonomy offers a new economic model for balancing capital and labor in any kind of organization. Uh, here it gets pretty pretty complicated. There's a whole concept of debt and how you raise money, etc. And I'm pretty sure this is very fluid. They're going to change a lot. This is really developer uh, focused. If you read this, I doubt you will understand much of that. And um, yeah, so I won't go too much into detail. I just want to show you that there is a platform. This screen may remind you Trello, and it does make sense because Trello is a way to organize tasks in a in a share in a distributed community. Okay, um, when you add trust on Trello, when you add some technology to deal with money and decisions, so governance and everything is possible because of the trust management by the blockchain, uh, then you can envision something like autonomy. Very, very uh, interesting. Uh, so these guys raised some money already from, from some investors in the blockchain space. And uh, I think we need to wait at least six months before we can see something uh, just to 
play with it, okay? Um, okay. All right, what else can I say about that? So we have seen Retonomy, we've seen Aragon. Oh yeah, let me talk about this idea I had, which may be not a good one, but it's it's very good to explain you how these technologies and these platforms completely open, sorry, I'll, I'll open the, the Aragon chat, well, I'm gonna show the Aragon chat here. They completely open uh, uh, new ways of thinking on how to organize things. So my idea, and there's actually uh, something I asked them, I wrote to them, uh, I've been thinking about this for more than a year and a half now, and I would really like to see this happening because I am. Um, I think we can find a better way to fund to fund these kind of companies. You probably heard about the ICOs. The ICOs are initial coin offerings, like a company says, "I'm going to do something on the blockchain. I'm going to give you this monopoly money. You're going to give me real money, right?" And that's been. In the end of 2017, a lot of investments, a lot of, most of them were uh, completely hopeless. Many of them were scams. So, what was the problem with with ICO in this space? The ICO uh, meant that a lot of money, millions, some in some cases tens of millions, a lot of money goes very fast to unexperienced an guys, um, startup guys, who do not have the capability. To, to manage all this money. So they got all this money and then, you know, uh, all hell broke loose. And um, uh, a better way, in my case, my idea is this one, like the centralized funding of departments. Uh, let's say that a DAO needs some social network exposure. That's exactly what I, what I explained to you before, right? Uh, what is the difference from the explanation before? Um, that you as an investor, right now, uh, if you invest in a startup, you put the money in the startup and they do what they do. If you invest in an ICO, you put money in the ICO and they do what they do. There is never the possibility for you as an investor to say, I like the project, I know it very well, I think we are weak on design, I think we are weak on marketing. So yes, I'm going to put about a thousand dollars, but I want this to go on marketing. So in the example before, I was saying you can choose which one of the persons gets it, but uh, I didn't click, make, made it clear that you can, in my idea, that would be great, decide that more money has to go into marketing and less money in development. So your money goes to marketing. That's it. You have invested in the marketing of the company. Now, uh, that makes you much more, uh, it makes you feel empowered because you have actually influenced a specific aspect of the company. Or maybe you are... Do you think usability is not good? Like the website or the app is not good? Well, you develop, you, you're going to invest, instead of the general project, you're going to invest specifically in usability. Not only you can decide who does the usability. Okay, I think this is really powerful. Um, but I haven't seen any of these companies doing that. I asked them, they say, they told me to check a bit uh, more in, uh, to check this part, where is it? I lost their answer. Ah, yeah, here. Yeah, okay. Uh, I suggest to play around with the dot voting that app. Uh, documentation is a bit sparse, but you can find Autark devs here and Keybase. So yeah, as you see, this is still a bit. It's not like ready for you to launch um, a decentralized organization unless you want to invest a lot of time and I would say risk in uh, in. Um, doing that and the link is sending me is a ring be or ring by uh, which means it's not the live mainnet of ethereum but it's like the play the test part and that shows you how early it is now it's early uh, we cannot play with it um, uh, but it's uh, it's really interesting it's really interesting uh, in, in 10 years or 20 years we may find ourselves you know like working on this from day one and that would be the default option and I'm sure there's gonna be uh, templates uh, we told me was telling me about templates so depending on the company uh, and actually oh sorry already Aragon really has templates 
can't remember if it's like democratic or, or not democratic, but you choose according to your project, you, you have a specific template. Uh, another example which really helps understand, let's say you want to organize a conference, you could build a company with a few clicks, you build this company and people can come in, put the money into it, the money goes into the smart contracts and then people start helping and the, 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 the event happens and then you close it. Uh, zero paperwork. Now, of course, I'm saying zero paperwork and you say, is this legal? Of course it's not legal. This is not even uh, conceivable today. So there are no laws. I mean, we, we complain that lawmakers uh, regulators are slow, but we cannot really expect them to uh, to to make laws before even something really uh, exists. So no, uh, this is something you try, and uh, you hope that the laws are uh, following uh, as, as fast as possible. Otherwise, you're gonna go into this uh, gray area. But we've seen disruption happening like this. We've seen what Airbnb has done. We've seen Uber. Uh, if you want to innovate, you know you can't really wait for for the regulators to come. Uh, one thing which we can say about these companies is that when the regulators come, they still don't wanna, don't want to um, follow the rules and this is because they need to grow and the profit driven, etc. So this is kind of the, the bad part about, about centralized um, uh, companies. I think I've said everything. Um, I just wanted you to, to uh, expose you to these ideas and, and these ideas maybe will start, you know, digging into your minds and maybe maybe you're gonna have uh, ideas of your own maybe you're gonna check out these projects um, again so that's, that also shows why trips today is not decentralized we can't there's no software the software is, is not ready um, i'm really eager to start in maybe decentralizing small parts at least of, of what we're doing through this software so i'm following them and uh yeah, I think uh, that's it. I just leave you with uh, no, that's not a thing. That's another metaphor. It won't really work for that. All right, so sorry for leaving you with this note. Thank you very much for uh, checking out. Uh, oh, I never do this. I should do this. Why don't you subscribe to the bottom? Uh, we need a thousand subscribers in YouTube to be able to do lives. So this cannot be a live for that reason. No, that's not true. This could be a live because it's on a desktop, but it's always there's always some delay with the voice, and I, I never have time to really dig into the technology of this. But if you get a thousand sub subscribers, then we can do lives with a, with a mobile phone, which is much easier. So please click on subscribe. This is a, a channel which takes you uh, interesting and, and mind blowing concepts. So thanks, thanks so much for listening. Bye.